Well, welcome you to the November 14th meeting of the Camilla City Council. I'm going to ask the ask acting clerk to cross the call of the road. Councilman Campbell? Yeah. Councilwoman Willingham? Present. Councilman Jenkins? Here. Councilman Tweedy? Here. Councilwoman Smith? Present. Councilman Carl? Here. Well, since we're in hand, we need some prayer. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be your name, Thank you for this day. Thank you for the grace that you have stored upon us. As we transact the business of the city of Camilla, let us be on one accord and let you order our step father. And I know if you order our step, everything will be okay. These and other blessings I ask in thy name. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we go for the approval of the minutes, I want to present to you, I guess, uh, the new city manager, who most of you know, Mr. Ben Adams, is the new city manager. You've had a chance to consider the minutes of October the 10th. What do I hear? I make a motion approved. Second. The motion is second that the minutes be approved. Then discussion or correction. If not all in favor, opposed, the minutes are approved. We have the report from the administrative committee. We have a couple of items, or several items. The Greater House of Worship Church requested council to extend their current conditional use for an additional two years. The church is located at 75 East Oakland Avenue. After discussion, council agreed to allow the church a six month extension and the church must come back to council in six months with a progress report. The administrative committee recommends approval of the six month conditional use extension with the church coming back to council with the progress report at that time. That's the formal motion. Second. The motion is second that we grant a six month extension to the greater house of worship with that discussion. I thought we'd grant a year and we had to do it. Anybody come back and see? But it says six months. But it says six months. It says six months. Well, like it should be like the one, like the memo. Well, I was thinking we had take, talked about a year, too. I thought it was a year. It's still going to be six months. 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 Look over. Update. 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 Update is there any other discussion? So that's been adjusted to show that the extension will be for uh, one year and they will come back in six months for an update. Is that the only language change we need, Mr. Attorney, just to make that happen? Any other? If not all in favor, opposed? The motion for a six for a one year extension passes. Number two, city manager Barry discussed enterprise zones, the program description, enterprise zones criteria, and enterprise zones incentives. The regional commission is working to help develop this plan. The plan will include all of the city limits, also creating incentives to attract new businesses and creating more jobs for our community. The administrative committee recommends adoption of the resolution and authorizes the mayor to sign. That's in the form of motion. Second. It's been motion and second that we adopt the enterprise zone resolution. I ask the attorney mayor just to give us a brief. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. This is uh, an economic development uh, program uh, for areas that have uh, endemic po poverty and, uh, and depressed sections of their community. And it allows you to make um, you know, certain incentives for people to come in and invest. For example, tax abatements. Uh, you can abate certain fees like occupation and uh, taxes, uh, 
uh, building fees, that kind of thing. Uh, you have set criteria to do that, of course, but this just enables you to do that. Uh, and so that's what it is. Do you know any other communities that are doing that? Well, the, the, I saw this ordinance one before that came from Biggs, uh, <laughs> and I wouldn't, uh, that, so uh, I, I, I assume now that the RDC is out trying to, to, to do this in every, every community. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know of any uh, communities where they're actually down here that have done it, uh, that have actually performed uh, these abatements to the extent that it's uh, tractor an industry, but it's worth a try. Mm -hmm. Once yeah. the resolution passes, and if it doesn't seem to be working, is it something you can rescind? Oh, yes, an ordinance. You can rescind it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm assuming this is the plat showing the entire city limits. That's what, yeah. It's, yes, yeah. that's it. It appears to be the entire city limits. Anyway. Right. I think that's what it is. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I would recommend that, uh, that we try it. But there may be somebody that decides to locate here that will need a little mm -hmm. extra push. It's just another economic development, too, I think. We've been fortunate enough to have some uh, new businesses come in uh, or enlarge what they already had. So mm -hmm. this could perhaps have been a tool to speed them up to do that as well as find new people. Any other discussion? All in favor of adopting the resolution to create the enterprise zones? Yeah. Change? It's an ordinance. The or ordinance. ordinance. Yeah. Okay. We need to change. Okay. Ordinance to adopt the enterprise zone. All in favor? They oppose. So the ordinance passes, not resolution. <coughs> I have three. Uh, council will discuss a resolution and a 401A employee retirement plan. The city currently has a 457 plan for city employees. This 401A plan is for the city's contribution. The city will match 9% for the city manager and 1% for employees in the city's defined benefit plan. The administrative committee recommends approval of the plan adopt the resolution and authorize the mayor to sign. That's the motion. Okay. In motion second that the city adopts the resolution for the one retirement plan. Is there any discussion? Madam Mayor, I'd like to clarify one thing on this uh, agenda item. The city actually contributes more than 9% to the employees the prior benefit program. So you're not actually doing anything for the city manager that you're not doing for the employees. It's just being done in a different way. Consistent with the contract <coughs> entered into with the city manager. So the city would be contributed another 1%? The 1% would be eligible to anyone who would like to participate. If they wanted to put 1% of their salary into this plan, the city would match it with 1%. So in effect, the, the employees that are in the defined benefit plan could actually get 10.4% of their uh, salary into a, put it into a retirement plan. So currently they can do 9.5% well, or not, uh, uh, roughly 9, 9 to 10%, is that right? That's going into the defined, you, the city is putting that into the defined benefit plan. And I've elected or asked the city council to not, I don't want to participate in the defined benefit plan. But I'm just trying to make the point what you're doing for the city manager is no more, slightly exactly. less, slightly less than what you're doing for the current employees of the five benefit program. Okay, so to be completely clear, the one percent is on top of what they already, the city employees already get. The city, they, they can't elect the one percent. Yes, they can't elect like, this way. This is a. a, a Deferred comp plan out of the five management plan, which all the employees are now accept the city manager. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll all in favor? Opposed? The resolution of employment retirement plan passes. That's all we have for the administrative committee, Mayor. Public works. Uh, <clears throat> City Manager Barry discussed the maintenance proposal for the 
from the Georgia Department of Transportation that would allow the city to maintain DOT routes within the city limits for items such as hatching pavement, mowing, shoulder maintenance, ditch cleaning, reseeding, and resodding of right of ways, guardrail repair, emergency services, and other maintenance functions needed to keep the routes in proper condition. In return for the maintenance, the city will be reimbursed by DOT at the rate of $3,500 per mile per year. This agreement consists of approximately nine and a half miles along State Route 97, State Route 37, State Route 112, and State Route 3 slash US 19 with an annual reimbursement of approximately $33,250. Public Works Committee recommends approval of this agreement and authorizes the mayor to sign this uh, motion. This is in the form of a motion. Sorry. The motion is second that the maintenance contract with DOT be executed. Is there any further discussion? Well, we, we've been doing this. Anyway. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, it's not going to be a money-making deal. It's just a reimbursement pace. Also, make sure you get it done. At some point. Well, it calls for an annual reimbursement. <coughs> Do we have an idea of when the payment would be made? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think it says that. I didn't know. That. I didn't see it a time. <coughs> uh, it says annually. So I would assume that when they have the money, they pay it. Well, you know, I, people ask me to review from time to time DOT contracts, and I always come back and say, you can either sign it or not. Uh, well, <laughs> I, don't way think, they I think we won't sign it. <laughs> we, uh, otherwise, we argue with it for two years and yeah. still come back to the same spot. We won't sign it. Yeah. Well, I, was, I, was just, I was just curious about the time. Do we, you know? Yeah, it's not in here. Right. Right. Well, you know, we asked Tom about that, and I, I'm not sure if you were clear, but he it's, it's once answer. Years. Years. That time gave the same answer this time. Did. <laughs> but if you notice on 19, we've been doing that. If you waited on the state to do it, to be grass out high. Yeah, that's right. And I know out 37. Then it's got a clarification in here that uh, go ahead then. On the, uh, on the second page on the, uh, item five, it says payment will, payment will be made on a prorated monthly basis. Okay. And the city will invoice it. The department of money. So, clear now. That's where we'll take care of that. No, we yeah. have that. Yeah. yeah. It's good to have a city manager on top of him. Yeah. He's showing off tonight. Yeah. He's trying to do my job. That's why. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Motion second. 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 Item two, the uh, Camilla Police and Fire Department had made a request to the Michigan Board of Commissioners to allow them to use the old road squad building located at 170 West Stevens Street. The Board of Commissioners approved the request and submitted an intergovernmental agreement to the city for the use of the property. The Public Works Committee recommends approval of the agreement and authorizes the mayor to sign it. This is an form of motion. Second. Motion and second that we enter into a lease agreement with the county. Madam uh, Mayor, did, did y'all settle on down at number seven with your uh, casualty insurance? You know, what was in the square that we put in there? I didn't. I have okay. That's all right. We can do it without. I would think the company of us. Yeah. Okay. This is basically what we've been doing. Right. I don't think it's the same thing. All right. Any other discussion or clarification? The rent is ten dollars a year, correct? Yeah, I was gonna ask that that be clarified that the uh, the rent's fairly nominal, ten dollars a year. So and we're to main, we're to maintain the building. So. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposes? No pass. Uh, Mr. City Manager, let me move you on up here to speak your other business now so you're not in the floor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
wanted to bring to, uh, to the council's attention that the December 7th work session will conflict with the <coughs> annual Christmas parade. And I believe the council has ridden in the parade in the past. And if you want to do that this year, you might uh, consider rescheduling your work session to December the 6th to avoid that conflict. That's the conversation for Monday. That's correct. Have you checked on the weather report? I don't know. It froze last year. <laughs> 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 if you ask me, can I do something about the weather? The answer is no. Oh. I just want to know how to pay. Does, 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 so moved. Sorry. It's been motion and second that the December 7th work session be moved to December 6th. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? So we'll see at the proper notification be made. We'll put on the, uh, on the scroll or whatever else we make public notices. We'll see those public notices are timely made. Two other items. I uh, just want to remind the uh, Council members at the GMA District 10 meeting will be this Thursday night in Bainbridge at 6 p.m. Um, and also, I hope each of you received an invitation, but if you didn't, the uh, Development Authority is starting an uh, annual uh, appreciation luncheon for existing businesses. I think this is a good idea to uh, thank the businesses that have continued to, to, to stay in business during these economic times, and that's, uh, did, did anybody, did any council members get this? I, I got one. Okay. okay, we'll make sure that we uh, email those of you that didn't get a copy of it. But it's uh, Tuesday, November the 22nd. It'll be from 11.30 to 1.30 in the Hand Trading Company building, and um, Gretchen Corbin, who is a Deputy Commissioner of Global Commerce with the Georgia Department of Economic Development, will be the guest speaker. Still, Terry, do you have any? Oh, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Are there any still some presentations? On the announcement I have, I'm still soliciting gifts for the mayor's Christmas motorcade to Thomasville. The gifts are to be in by December 6th. On December 6th. If you have gifts, if you call to have somebody pick them up, or you can leave them upstairs at my office. And this is an annual event sponsored by GMA. Is there anything else from the council? Did you want to challenge us to this? Uh... Yeah, this letter. Okay. Yeah, I asked the uh, with GMA asked council members, and then I went to extend it to city employees to give eleven dollars toward the cause. If you give the eleven dollars donation, you make a check to pay over to the Southwestern State Hospital. Southwestern State Hospital. This year's uh, chairman of the drive is asking for 11 and 11. 11 dollars because uh, sometimes, you know, there are items that should have to go out and buy specially. It's special. Who, who would we give that check to? You can give it, uh, leave it with Brenda or leave it with me. But well, you leave it with Brenda and she'll give it to me. Well, we, we give through the store as well, and many of you others do the same thing, but uh, I thought this was was good for uh, council members to... For the new mayor. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's not there yet. But as a council member, I would encourage everyone to participate in this. It's, uh, uh, these people's face just light up when, when they're uh, shown gifts or shown the love that that uh, they receive from from those that go down and, and give the gifts. It's it's, a, it's amazing what uh, what they get out of it, and, and in turn what we get out of it. I have one other announcement. Uh, our city clerk, Kathy Baker, is in the hospital. She's been there a few days. Kathy has had some uh, issues this year, but she has prayerfully and courageously bought them and has continued to do her job and to do it well when she's able. So I ask you all to uh, 
know, keep Kathy, keep Kathy in your prayers. The uh, council members will be sending a special card down there to her. But that's why Kathy has been absent for the last couple of meetings. You know, otherwise, she'd be here. So please keep Miss Baker in your prayers. Anything else? I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you.